Good evening, this is Tanisha Laverne Graham reporting live from the red carpet at the Paley Center for Media in New York City for a special reunion with the cast of what is said to be one of the greatest shows in television history. That would be Oz. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Oz, which premiered on HBO July 12th, 1997 and forever changed the way we view our prison system and the way we consume television. The Oswald Maximum Security Penitentiary. Some people call it Emerald City. To me, it's Oz. In Emerald City, we got rules. We tell you when to sleep, when to eat, when to piss. There is no yelling, no fighting, no fucking questions. something in the air and it ain't love I have Miss Edie Falco with me one of the greatest actresses of our time oh, in goodness. my in my personal opinion and we're here celebrating 20 years of Oz can you believe 20 years has passed already I can't believe it you know five minutes ago me and all these guys were meeting down on 9th Avenue and uh, making our crazy TV show. I don't know what's happening. Time is whizzing by, as they say. You know, tell me about your early thoughts about Oz. I mean, when you're in it, you never know how great something's going to be. Right. You know, so when you got the script and you're reading it, like your day-to-day, -day, when did you have that moment that say, you know what, this could really be something special? I never have my finger on the pulse of that kind of thing, like at all. I tend to, uh, it looked interesting to me because I liked the character and I knew the actors that I was going to be working with and I, uh, I liked the directors we were working with. That's what I had to go on. As far as how it would do, you know, there was not a lot of scripted television, certainly not for cable networks. So I just, I had no idea what would turn into anything. I never, I still don't. Well, you guys kind of like blazed the trail. I mean, because back in 1997 when this started, I think Oz was one of the first dramatic series yeah. like on HBO. Yeah, I think it was. And I think there was not a lot of it back then. You know, so what's one of your favorite shows now that's on HBO? The Deuce. Oh. Huge fan. And I don't get caught up in that stuff anymore, but I'm totally down for the count with that one. What is it about The Deuce that has you drawn in? Well, it's a period thing. Now, they're calling, you know, my childhood now is a period thing. The 70s. <laughs> um, wow. And, you know, it's James Franco and, and uh, Maggie Gyllenhaal. And, I don't know, these people are really, really good. And uh, Chris Bauer, the acting's phenomenal. The story is completely, I've invested in it. Oh, wow. You know, it's very hard to know what makes you want to keep coming back, but it happened with me, with Deuce. What is your advice to young women who want to get started in this industry? I mean, you know, when you started, you know, in this game, the acting game as I like to call it, you know, things are very different. Now there are all these new mediums, there's social yeah. media, you can kind of really start yourself. So what do you think about that? I know nothing about it. That's, oh, wow. yeah, I mean, I, I don't know, I would, I would give useless advice. Um, just about when, uh, when I started, I wanted to act and it's what I did, period. And I didn't make money at it for many, many years. I had my, my real job and I would go to do my play in the evening and I was happy as a clam. Wow. And then it turned into me being able to support myself and that's, you know, that was my dream come true. But if you want to act, you act, period. I read somewhere that Oz was the first show that you were actually able to make a sustainable living from. Is that true? Yeah. Yes, it is. It was the first uh, somewhat consistent paycheck I'd ever had. You know, I, I did Homicide with, with Tom Fontana before that, but it was periodic, and I never knew when an episode would come. It was not enough to really fully support myself. So how long had you been acting before you booked Oz? My whole life, wow. since I was a kid. Uh, you know, in neighborhood plays and community theater, and then in school, high school, and I went to uh, an acting college, and I was always acting outside of college. So, I, you know... As far as I was concerned, I was an actor, but it, I just wasn't getting paid. Gotcha. Yeah. Mr. Dean Winter, how are you? I'm good. How are you? 20 years of Oz. 20 years of Oz. Who, who knew? Can you believe it? Yeah. No, I can't, actually. It's amazing. it's amazing. Talk to me a little about, you know, coming on board with this in its infancy, 
and what you thought because I read some interesting things, you know, about the whole beginning of this and meeting at bars and all that kind of stuff. So talk to me a little bit. I was discovered in a bar bartending by Tom Fontana. My brother Scott and I were bartending and and so Tom wrote us roles on homicide and then and then based on my bar, watching me bartend, Tom wrote the role of Ryan O'Reilly because I was a, I was a real hustler when I was a bartender and and um, this is pretty much what the character was in the show and and so I was there I was there from the from the from the from the beginning um, you know helping Tom create the character and you know I was a, I was a new actor at the time so it was like a real it was a real blessing for me to be able to um, to, to jump on board a show like this you know it was nothing's nothing's ever come close to it so wow. when it was it was so plus it was so groundbreaking at the time you know it was the first you know you, you look at the the uh, diversity in the cast you know we had a Muslim lead we had a gay love story you know dealing with drugs and everything we everything we were dealing with people are now talking about oh that's break that's breakthrough television when someone has a, a Muslim character or, or a gay character. I'm like, we were doing that 20 years ago. Like, where were you? So You definitely were. I know Oz created a great environment for a lot of very talented actors to, you know, cut their teeth and learn every aspect about the business. Some have gone on to do great and wonderful things. So who would you like to see at this reunion today? I mean, you got a special? You got, like, a, a buddy here? Well, I'm happy to see Eamon Walker, who plays Saeed. You know, oh, wow. I... I, yeah, I I have, there he is. I haven't seen I have I haven't seen him for a minute. Um, you know he was uh, he was like a real leader uh, of of ours on the show. You know he was kind of a seasoned guy, and we, we were all we were all kind of new. Um, and so it was uh, it was a, just a, I'm I'm happy to see him. I haven't seen him for a long time, so it's exciting. That's awesome. Yeah. So knowing that you guys are the Trailblazers, yeah. You know, in this industry, yeah. HBO telling this uh, strong, heavy narrative about the prison system. What's one of your favorite shows on HBO right now that you're like, you know what, if it weren't for us, you guys wouldn't be doing that? Well, I mean, I, you know, I, I don't want to take that approach because that, that's just that, you know, that be, it becomes kind of like an arrogant thing. I mean, HBO does a lot of really good work. Um, I actually really enjoyed the show Girls. I thought, yeah. I thought that was a really different show. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to, throw that one in the ring I know I know it just ended but you know but I, I, I thought that was a really well done show yeah great yeah have you watched Issa Rae's Insecure uh, I haven't seen it it's a great show yeah I haven't seen it you haven't should seen tune it. into it I will now I will so the younger generation who's just now becoming familiar with Oz what would you like them to walk away with when they see the show I just think you know really just besides the acting and the directing really like the art of storytelling um you know the way the way that tom fontana and his writing staff told the stories on this show it hadn't been done before and just the way everything was inter interwoven like the, the the fabric of the show so i think you know i think um today's youth with social media and just a plethora of really shitty television and shitty movies they're 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 not really um subjected to really great storytelling and I think that if you have a chance and you haven't seen Oz and you can, and you can watch it, you, you're, you're going to come away with an, an education. I don't think this gentleman needs any introduction, so I'm just going to go ahead into the interview. So you played one of the most unforgettable characters. Oh, thank you for that. On Oz. Uh -huh. And I read that uh, Tom Fontana had a very difficult time trying to find the right actor for this <laughs> As, character. Uh, yeah, one of those old arguments coming up again. Uh, but the very first time, I think it was 1997, um, I was working for Linda LaPlante, who you guys will know of uh, Prime Suspect. And he and she had just uh, worked the year before, and he was having a conversation with her, and he was saying, I'm, I'm looking for a particular type of character and to be played in a particular way. And she said, I've got just a guy for you. And he was like, uh, yeah, well, you know, it's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll eventually find him. And she was like, no, I'm sending him to New York tomorrow. And I got the phone call and she was like, Amy, what are you doing? And I was like, uh, I don't know, licking my wounds from something that wasn't working. And she was like, you're going to New York. You're going to see my friend Tom. You're going to be you. Going to New York from London, everybody. So this wasn't like a sure shot. This was a gamble. Yeah, it was a, it was a huge gamble. But I didn't expect to get anything. You know, I was going to take it as a visit to New York, have a nice couple of days, 
do an interview, go back home. And in the end, uh, Tom and I met and we both agreed that we were being bullied by Linda LaPlante to see each other and that we should just go through the motions. And I thought, oh, okay. I did my thing at the audition. Um, he phoned up that next day, or a couple of days later, and said, it's not going to work out because I thought you were brilliant, but you're wrong for that part. And I was like, it's great. I'll Wait go home. Minute, really? Yeah. He'll tell you. He's right there. Uh, because I read for Terry Kinney's part at that point. Oh. And he said, it's not going to work out. And I was being, you know, I was, I was said to him, well, thank you very much. Here he is. Pull him in. There he is. Wait, oh, hello. Just, yeah, so I'm trying to get the story straight with this I gentleman getting cast for as Saeed. Before the Saeed thing. He right. said, I'm going to write you something. And he I flies said, in from London. You know, and, and he doesn't book right, yeah, away. No, don't book right away. No, but he was so impressive. And I had this character of this Muslim uh, leader in my head, this black Muslim leader in my head. Right, which and is I, a combination of Louis Farrakhan and Malcolm X, kind of. Yeah, but then it eventually became Eamon Walker. So. Oh, hello. <laughs> no, it, wow. was, it was fantastic. I mean... This man, I wouldn't be working in this country without him. He vouched for me. Oh, it's my fault. It's your fault. What, you want to send me back? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he vouched for me to HBO and everything else. My whole trajectory of my career changed after that meeting. So I'm very, very grateful to this man. And I only did what Linda LaPlante told me to do. So, <laughs> <laughs> wow. so did I at the time. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, you know, it's 1997. This was the first television show of its kind. Mm -hmm you know, to be on HBO. What was that pitching process like? Well, it was actually relatively easy. Um, uh, a friend of mine had a meeting at HBO when he found out they were do going to start doing drama series. Okay. And, and, he, and Chris Albrecht said to him, you know, we're, we're looking for something that's really original that nobody's ever done, and we're thinking maybe a prison show and my friend had known that I had pitched like three prison shows, to, one to each of the networks and the broadcast networks and gotten thrown out. Oh, wow. They were like, we don't want any part of this, Fontana. So he called me. I was here in New York. And he called me and he said, get your ass out to L.A. There's someone stupid enough to do your, your prison wow. series. Wow. So I flew out there. I had a meeting with Chris and a couple of other executives, Ann Thomopoulos and Bridget Potter and I told them what I wanted to do, and they said, write it. And then we shot a little 15-minute presentation, um, and then, which you weren't in, and, uh, and then they said, make the series. So it was the most painless process of development I've ever had in my life. <laughs> wow. So who was the first actor that was cast? Uh, it was probably Terry Kinney. Okay, okay. That you met at the bar. No, that was Team Winners. Oh, okay. No, I'm no. sorry, I got it mixed up there. The bit. first actors were Terry Kinney and John Seda, who John now... Seda. We worked together in Chicago. In okay. Chicago. Um, and, uh, yeah, that was pretty much... the. Those were the first two, because the presentation was very... was one story, and it was very limited in its... Uh, in, the, in the amount of people that were in it. Well, it's definitely, it's a cult classic. It's a teaching tool. It's everything that we need it to be. So thank you so much for making an amazing contribution Listen, to, to this space. He, he um, the actors made that show. They did. The courage of the actors made that show. Now, people will rearrange their work schedule and class schedule to watch Oz. Well, I'm happy to hear that. Yes, it's truly an unrepeatable event. Congratulations. From my point of view, I think... Uh, what he wrote changed American television. Television was never the same again after Oz. I mean, my fault. It's all your fault. <laughs> I'm just going to keep so doing that. I'm really, really, really proud of that. You know, if nothing else, everything changed after this moment. So. Wow. So, what's your favorite show on HBO? On HBO right now, right now yeah. I uh, I watch Game of Thrones. I'm watching The Deuce as we speak. Everybody likes The Deuce. Edie Falco just mentioned The Deuce to me as one of her favorites as well. Well, because there's a, there's a similarity, I think, in the, you know, because Edie, Edie was there, but um, there was a darkness to the writing and a reality to Oz that we didn't know before. And one of the things he didn't mention when he was standing here was he said to us, look, I want to keep it real and I'm on a, I'm on a discovery path. 
and I just need your trust that I'm going to put you into some situations that you may not like, and I may not like them, but I want to discover them. I want the truth about what it's like in society outside. We're using prison to talk about what's happening outside in the real world. And we all just signed up for it and went, okay, you got our trust. And said, so you'll be naked emotionally and physically. And we were like, okay. Yeah. But then that turned out to be That's the best. That's the work. Ever. That's, the, That's work. the work. And so what the deuce has is it has that, um, that truth. Because your clothes don't matter. It's about who you are, what animal you are that's walking the streets, trying to survive, and that's what the deuce has. I love that. That is an absolutely, you know, amazing way to put that into, you know, structure there. So what's next for you? Right now I'm shooting Chicago Fire. And we've been there for a good number of years, and we have a good family atmosphere. Uh, everything I learned while shooting ours, I have brought all of the, my wealth of experience to that and we we recreate that that everybody in LA or New York who comes to work with us they all go oh my god I love working here and and it's the same type of thing so we'll see Talk to me about a moment with Oz where you said you know what this is going to be something Did you know nobody did you ever have that be, no nobody knew that everybody what it was the family atmosphere was let's be the best we can be nobody knew it was a thing what we what we saw was, you know, like, I saw him do his work. I'd be sitting behind the monitor watching him do his work. And that's Dean Winters right there with that look in his eye. And it was Machiavellian. It was devilish. It was Iago-esque. And you were like, oh, my God. You know? And so what that does is you go, oh, no, when it's my turn, i got to go home, do some homework, right. and bring my stuff. Right. And so everybody did that. And so we, when we started working together... It wasn't like competition. It would be like, I've been thinking this about the scene. And he'd be thinking, oh, I think of this about the scene. And then it would just build. Nobody knew it was a thing. It became a thing. Yeah, talk to me about being a part of one of the greatest shows oh. in the history wow, of television. That. Absolutely, man. You guys were the trailblazers. People would arrange or rearrange their work schedules, their class schedule, cancel dates. Do whatever was necessary to be in front of that television for us. Yeah. Kicked yeah. off July 12th, 1997. Yeah. And the, and the great thing about it was, like, the surprises that you would find out, fr like, who viewers were. Like, there was a woman who uh, my brother knew who lived on the Upper East Side on Fifth Avenue and 63rd Street. She owned her own building and rushed home to watch Oz. That's how it was. That's how it was. Yeah. I mean, I know classmates. They were like, oh, my God, Oz. <laughs> Studying over, listen, it's going way. If I don't know the information right now, I'm not going to know it. Yeah. I got to tune in. Uh, yeah. So in the infancy of this amazing narrative, you know, what were your thoughts about it when you first had the script in your hand? Um, you know, because I knew Tom and I trusted Tom, I was... I was uh, ready. I mean, that's why I could do the things I did on that show, as uh, scary as they were to do. Like, there was a whole thing right before we started, a couple of years before that, where uh, Will Smith did this uh, six degrees of separation. He didn't want to kiss. Oh, yeah. And so Washington yeah. told him, don't kiss a man on screen. So there was all that sort of homophobia stuff out there. Right. Uh, and so when Chris Maloney and I, uh, in the second season, got together, I said, let's not shy away from it. Let's yeah. go towards it and try and make it what it needs to be. And I mean, and I, you know, uh, I sort of rambled into that. But I think what was amazing about the show was that at first, that first episode or the second episode where you, you start to hate Schillinger, right? Because he's so bad to me, right? But if you watch... You keep with that show, you start to understand him and you start yeah. to see why he does what he does. And even if you think he's a disgusting prick, you understand him. And that was what was great about the show was it didn't pick sides. Mm. So you are a part of history with Oz. Yes. One of the greatest shows on television. Yes. Period. Not just American television, but 
television. In general. Worldwide. Worldwide. Global. Global. Everybody was watching this shit. Hell Everybody yes. was watching this shit. <laughs> now I'm not even gonna try and rhyme. Like I that. didn't I didn't I didn't watch it. It was too it was too brutal for me. Too much naked men brutalizing each other. So listen, when you got the script. Yeah. Talk to me about joining the cast, and you got the script in your hand. Like, what were your first thoughts for this? Well, I don't know if you know. I mean, I was discovered by Tom Fontana. He found me at the, at the New Regan Poets Cafe doing poetry. And so in the first season, I was just doing poetry. So I had no lines. I had just mums get up there and do a poem. Okay. And I would do a poem, and then um, and it worked out. It was beautiful. I would write something, or I had something already planned. And uh, I think in the first season, I did around three or four poems or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, at the end of that season, he was like, um, Tom was like, you know, we're going to write you in and bring, make you a character and give you a storyline. And I was like, okay. He's like, take an acting class. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and, and the rest is history. And the rest is history. Yeah. Well, we I love your work. Yeah, thank you. Tanisha Laverne Grant, blackinamerica.com.